Hi there, welcome to Joyce on YouTube. Don't forget to join us on the Joyce Meyer app and at JoyceMeyer.org for more of what you're about to see and lots of great content to help you in your everyday life. Thanks so much for joining us. Proverbs 3, 5 through 8. Lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind. And don't rely on your own insight or understanding. In other words, don't waste your time trying to figure out things that only God knows the answer to and He's not ready to tell you yet. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Reverently fear and worship the Lord and turn entirely away from evil. In other words, if I could put this plainly, don't even think that you're smart enough to run your own life without help from God. It'll be health to your nerves and sinews and marrow and moistening to your bones. In other words, the less we try to reason things out, the healthier we're going to be. The mind of the flesh is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit. So we can sit around and we can reason and reason and think and think and finally come up with something, but that doesn't mean that what we came up with is correct. Romans 8, 6 in the Amplified Bible says, Now the mind of the flesh, which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit, is death. That means it's not going to make you happy. It's going to make you miserable. But the mind of the Spirit is life and peace, both now and forever. Are you living out of your mind without searching for the wisdom and the agreement of the Holy Spirit? Paul prayed for wisdom to rise up and enlighten their minds that they would have true depth of understanding. You know, Adam and Eve were spirit-led when they were first put in the garden. They weren't led by their body, by their mind, by their own will or by their emotions. They were spirit-led. But when they chose sin, everything was turned upside down. And then all the natural elements, all their five senses took over and God's will was pushed to the background. Our body is supposed to just be a vehicle for our spirit to work through here in the earth. You can't be in the earth without a body. And it's a vehicle for our spirit man to work through. But if the spirit man doesn't have control of the soul, then he can't, can't get through our mind, our will, and our emotions actually for his glory to be seen in the earth. The fall of man changed God's original intention for us. But we can go back to it. You know, there's a wonderful scripture in Ecclesiastes, and I love this. Let me ask you a question. What kind of condition is your life in? Do you have joy? Do you have peace? Do you feel like you're fulfilling a purpose in your life? Or are you discontent and unhappy most of the time? Unhappy with your job, unhappy with your family, unhappy with where you live? How much do you give thanks to God compared to how much you complain? These are questions that I have to ask myself on a regular basis. I think it's good to examine yourself, not under condemnation, but to just look at where am I at compared to the Word of God. And if there's things in your life that you don't like, they can be fixed pretty quick by simply obeying God. And Solomon wrote the book of Ecclesiastes, and he was a man who tried everything to be happy. I mean, he said, I did it all. I built myself houses and pools, and I had wives, and I, any, anything he wanted, he had it. And none of it really made him happy. And in the 12th chapter, the very last verse in Ecclesiastes, I love this, from the Amplified Bible. He says, all has been heard. The end of the matter is this. Fear God, revere and worship Him, knowing that He is, and keep His commandments. For this is, now stick with me, this is the whole duty of man, the full and original purpose of His creation. We were created to be obedient to God. 
the object of God's providence, the root of all character. See, our character, our God-like character is developed as we do what God wants us to do, not just what we want to do or what we think or feel. It's the foundation of all happiness, the adjustment, and I love this, the adjustment to all inharmonious circumstances and conditions under the sun and the whole duty of man. So while he's saying anything that's out of order in your life that needs to be fixed, obey God and it will come around to being what it's supposed to be. We don't want to live in reasoning. All it's going to do is cause us to be unhappy. Reasoning blocks discernment. That's one of the foundational principles of Proverbs. We need to be more discerning and live more by what we know inside, what we know in our spirit, rather than what we think. If, if you just think about, I was thinking yesterday about believing. You know, what, if you get just a little bit quiet, turn your brain off for a minute, you can find out what you believe. I may not feel that God is with me, and if I go with that feeling, then the devil will take advantage of that, and I'll just have a miserable day, and I could actually get into a real problem if I keep letting that go on, and I think that God's not with me, so then I begin to wonder, has he left me? Have I done something wrong? You know, is God mad at me about something? But if I, on a particular day, just feel like God's nowhere in the neighborhood, all I have to do is just shut my head off for just a minute and say, okay, Joyce, now what do you really believe? Well, I believe that God is with me all the time, that he never leaves me nor forsakes me, that his thoughts toward me are more than the grains of sand on the sea. That's what I believe. I believe that God will protect me and take care of me. Sometimes we want to get frightened or worried about all the things going on in the world and, you know, will we catch the virus and this and that and something else. But, you know, we don't have to worry about those things if we really believe that God loves us and that he has a good plan for our life and that no matter what happens, he's going to take care of us. But if we get into all this reasoning, you know, you can reason yourself right out of faith if you get into too much reasoning. You can control your mind. The Bible says casting down imaginations and every high and lofty thing that exalts itself against the true knowledge of God. So stop trying to figure everything out. You know something that Proverbs talks about a lot? I mean a lot. Really, a lot, a lot, a lot is adultery. So I'm just going to step out here bravely for a few minutes and talk to you about adultery. Our fornication would go along with that, which is sex before marriage, which today, I don't know, there's the weirdest notion in the world that you should just live together before you get married to see if it's going to work. Well, that may be the notion of the world, but it's not what God's Word says. And, you know, we can't just do whatever's popular in the world and ever really be in God's will. And there's so much cheating in marriages. And if you read Proverbs chapter 5, and I think it's Proverbs chapter 7, I mean, the Bi Proverbs says a lot about adultery. And it talks about how it will steal your life and it will minister nothing but death to you. And so what you need to do is, if you first feel a temptation, is run from that. Let's just say that you work in an office and you're an attractive young woman, but you've got a, a family, a husband, and a couple of kids, and I don't know, maybe things have not been going great between you and your husband, or maybe he doesn't pay enough attention to you, or whatever the case might be, and so... You're already at a disadvantage because you're open to temptation and Satan knows that. Well, suppose some nice young man at the office begins to bring you coffee and a donut every morning. Well, to be honest, about the second or third morning, the alarm bells should go off and you should say, this is not right. 
But then maybe one day he notices that you don't seem to be just right, so he asks you what's wrong, and you've had a hard time with your husband, so you decide to tell him all about it. Well, that's a second mistake. If you need to talk to somebody about your marriage problems, don't go to another single man or another married man. Go to a female friend or go to your spiritual leader. And so then maybe he asked you to go to lunch so you can talk about your problems. And before you know it, you're in big, big, big trouble. I remember when a man in church that was a good friend of my husband's and him and his wife were good friends of ours, he said to me one time when nobody was around, I wish my wife was as good looking as you are. And I mean right away. I came back with a compliment about how good looking his wife was and I walked away from him and I went straight and told my husband what he said. And Dave and I agreed that we would pray about it and if it ever happened again, Dave would talk to him. But you, you, gotta, you can't play around with that kind of stuff. You can't play around with fire and not get burnt. And I'm, you know, I'm not trying to heap condemnation on anybody. I'm trying to keep you out of trouble. I don't want you to get in trouble. I want you to get out of trouble. And Proverbs is just full of all this wonderful advice. There's so many things that the Bible says about the mouth in Proverbs. I mean, it, it, I think it's one of the key subjects in Proverbs is things about the mouth. How to treat your neighbor. Talks a lot about relationships. The Bible says be good to your neighbors. Treat them good, love them, help them, do things for them. You might say, well, they're not even nice neighbors. Well, maybe you could turn them into nice neighbors if you treat them the way that God treats you. And, you know, I need all this just as much as you do. I keep saying you, 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 but it's for me as well as for you. Let me say again, anybody who follows all the principles in the book of Proverbs will have an absolutely jaw-dropping, amazingly wonderful life. Want to hear more from Joyce on this topic? We've got you covered. Visit us in the Joyce Meyer app or at JoyceMeyer.org today.